reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is coming to judge the living and the dead, by his appearing in his kingly power, I charge you to preach the word, to stay with this task, whether convenient or inconvenient, correcting, reproving, appealing, constantly teaching, and never losing patience. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires will surround themselves with teachers who tickle their ears. They will stop listening to the truth and will wander off to fables. As for you, be steady and self-possessed. Put up with hardship. Perform your work as an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Verbum da mini.
just man shall blossom like the lily and shall flower forever before the Lord. Dominos vobiscum. Et Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Mateum. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but what if salt goes flat? What can you restore its flavor? Then it is good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Men do not light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. They set it on a stand where it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, your light must shine before men so that you, they may see your goodness and your acts and give praise to your heavenly Father. Verbum Domini. last part of the 12th century and early 13th century, two great brilliant lights were born in the church, St. Francis and St. Dominic. And really the church in her litanies and in her prayers even kind of combine these two saints together. That's why we don't feel bad about wearing Franciscan vestments on this feast day because the life of St. Francis and St. Dominic, and we would even say, Holy Father, St. Dominic, just like we say, Holy Father, St. Francis, as a member and founder of the Franciscans, we would too say, Holy Father, St. Dominic. So a very blessed feast day and a solemnity even for them, for our Dominicans throughout the world, both First Order and those who are nuns even, our sisters in Marbury and our sisters at St. Rose who teach at St. Rose Academy who I will go celebrate Mass for later today and to pray for all those Dominicans throughout the world and also those who are Third, third Order Dominicans who are lay people who follow just as many people here even this morning our third order Franciscans, many people feel a, a call to follow the spirituality and the example of St. Dominic. So a very blessed feast day to them. The readings today give food for thought. Salt and light are very familiar to all of us. And Jesus often uses images that are very familiar to us to communicate a deeper spiritual reality. But why salt and why light? These images or substances should awaken our senses. They cause a reaction. They enhance, they bring the flavor out or brighten a dark, dismal place. If we look at all the readings in context and also connected with the feast day of St. Dominic, we might say that one word can summarize the readings, and that's witness, being a witness. As Christians, we are called to be witnesses of Christ, witnesses of the love and mercy of God in the world. 
in our communities, in our families, and in all of our relationships. And it has been said that witness does so much more to build the kingdom of God than a lifelong time of learning and study, being a witness. It has been said that kindness also, which is an expression of charity, has done more for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God than all of learning and teaching put together because our witness and our teaching and our preaching without charity, without kindness, is void. It does not reach really the human ear. It might reach the ear, but it won't penetrate even the heart. St. Paul, Pope St. Paul the VI once said that modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than it does teachers. But if it does listen to teachers, it's first of all because they were witnesses. Modern man listens more readily to witnesses than it does teachers. But if it does listen to teachers, it's first of all because they were a witness. Take that in your own life. Just think of the teachers in your life throughout your life in grade school, high school, college, the teachers that had the most profound impact on you, it wasn't so much the way in which they taught, what they taught, but most of the time it was a matter in which they taught. It's how they loved. It's how they showed attention. It's how they built up charity. The message is more attractive, more believable, if we can see that the deliverer of the message actually believes it, if the message has transformed them. In the ancient world, salt was a very valuable commodity. In modern times, just as we trade with gold and stock, people traded with salt. We might think of salt as only being used for flavoring food. It is also used as a preservative in food. Apply these concepts to Jesus teaching us to be the salt of the earth, first of all, before the light of the world. Just as salt purifies and preserves, and you can even say penetrates, so too the Christian must be in the world <clears throat> to purify, to preserve, and to penetrate the world, the culture. We are to be witnesses within society to bring the flavor of the gospel into everyday life. As salt brings out the flavor of food, we are called to imbue culture and society with the flavor of the gospel, if you will. The life of the gospel, the values of the gospel. Once this salt, our Christian witness, that is, this salt is sprinkled throughout the world, it can purify and bring life even flavor where there was once coldness, bitterness, and indifference. And again, look at the lives of the saints all throughout Christian history. It's like they are sprinkled throughout the world, and their life and their witness and their preaching in charity, their witness give example and rise up other saints. You know, saints give birth to saints. Whenever there are saints, there are more people who feel like following this, this person. Look at the life of St. Francis, Holy Father St. Francis, and now Holy Father St. Dominic on this feast day. Look how many people left everything to follow them, to follow their example of 
living the gospel life, living like Jesus Christ lived. And this is true in our day today. If you look at the life of the Franciscans and also the Dominicans even, there are many different Dominican orders that are flourishing. They're not having a vocation crisis. They're exploding. Their convents, their cloisters, their friaries are too small to hold them. The Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, they have another type of vocation problem. Two, two small buildings now. And now they have over, I believe, 140 plus. And they started in 1997 in Michigan. And it just continues to grow and to grow and to grow. And even the friars of the eastern province up in Washington, just they continue to grow and to grow and to grow. I know many of them. And why is this? It's because not primarily of what they're preaching, because they're preaching the truth. It's because of their witness, because they've been convinced and been convicted about what they believe. And so many, many young men are being attracted to the friars in their way of life, in their manner of life. Jesus calls us to be the salt of the earth before he calls us to be the light of the world. Salt is a substance that has to be received that is, even eaten. And light is something that radiates outward. And before we can be that light, before we can be that witness in the world of Christ's love, we have to receive what can be called the salt of faith. And salt has to again, purify us, penetrate us, and preserve us before we can be that light of the world. Salt is used in the sacred liturgy and mixed with holy water. In extraordinary form of the Roman rite, a little bit of salt is placed on the infant's tongue to symbolize what salt does. What does salt do? It increases one's thirst. It's really the first substance, the first solid substance that a baby, a child in the extraordinary form takes in his or her body is salt. And that again is to symbolize that that child is to thirst for faith, is to awaken that thirst for faith within the child. It increases our thirst, salt. Again, witness kindness does more for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God than all of learning and preaching. And what does this teach us? If the learned and those given the task to preach are not charitable, then they are not authentic witnesses. It can safely be said that anyone given the duty and privilege to preach and to preach the gospel first must be a witness. Without being a witness, their teaching has no credibility. And apply that to the life of St. Dominic. St. Dominic, first of all, was completely transformed by the gospel. His life, they say, was a prayer. He would meditate often upon the gospels. Upon, as a matter of fact, he would even memorize the gospels. You know, how, do, we, do we do that? Do we take the word of God in so much that, that we memorize the gospels? That, we're, that we can, that not just we can quote it, by mouth, but does the gospel does the gospel translate into our lives? So much so that our life, if if someone would look at our lives, that 
they would know that we're a Christian, that, we're, that they would know that our lives have been transformed completely by the gospel. And that's the life of our Holy Father, St. Dominic. And we ask his intercession on our behalf and on behalf of the whole world that really a renewal in, of not just a witness, but a renewal in preaching throughout the world. That's the charism that St. Dominic gave to the universal church, is this charism to preach, not just in words, but to preach with the manner of his life. 